Hello, beautiful. You are listening to Stepping into the Light with your host, that is me, Julia Treat. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it so much. I am grateful that I get to spend this time with you. Today I want to talk about those damn triggers that can show up and knock us into an old habit or it you know triggers let's talk about these triggers i'm i'm coming to you today with my head hanging just a little low because i had someone that um triggered me last night and i realized this morning what was going on so as i always say learn from me michael and i were out and had some dinner so, you know like during the day it was an early early evening and then stopped at one of our favorite places. It's called the Tasting Room. It's just a little back room that has um, off to the back of a, it's a beer store, but they, they sell like craft beers, really like good beers. And this young lady bartends there. And there's, there's honestly maybe five of us that are ever there at the same time. But we get in the most interesting conversations anything from past lives to aliens to angels to who knows what and it's fascinating and we have so much fun and i always think as we're sitting there with just a handful of people that you know none of us even knew each other outside of this tasting room but this is where the universe put us together where we found each other to share our stories with like-minded people well Last night, um, it was just Michael and I and and the bartender, and then another person came in and we started talking, realizing that we lived kind of close to this other person, but I had never met uh, met him before. Then some other people came in, and it was kind of a different, you know, a new crowd. I didn't know very many of them. And um, one of the young ladies inside of the establishment, I can't remember how it came up. Oh, yes. I mentioned that my Michael's youngest daughter, Maria, had gotten married and that she had, you know, they just decided that they wanted to get married on their own. They didn't tell anyone. It was just she and her husband's thing. They went and did it. And uh, this young lady and her mother were sitting there and her mother said, well, you know, well, where'd she get married? And I said, I, you know, I don't even know. I didn't ask her. I assume it was a just of the peace or something, but I didn't even ask her because it doesn't matter to me. (laughs) Uh, that's not even a question I would think to ask. And so this mother was like looking at her daughter and saying things like, you know, oh, well, you better never do that to me. That I'd kill you or whatever, disown you. Or, And I said, for real? Like you would really do that if she just wanted to go do her own thing and didn't tell you? And she said, it ended up, her mom ended up saying, well, the only rule I have, the only stipulation is she has to be married by a priest. I mean, she has to be. There's no... There's no wavering there. And I, (laughs) let me just say, um, my tongue became unleashed. (laughs) I told her, I mean, things like I couldn't believe that you would even act that way or, or, or force that upon your child. Or so I said a lot of things and I felt good about it. I really did. But I realized it was actually getting me a little angry. And there's many reasons I feel like it was getting me angry. And I'll tell you about the, the, the final one when I, you know, towards the end that I realized today. But a few things that make me angry are it's that I'm in a very predominantly Catholic community. And this is not Catholic bashing, so don't even send me a message. I'm not bashing anything. But where I live, um, there's a lot of fear. And it it just goes with everyone. that It's just whatever we've been taught, right? I mean, whatever we're taught in church, from our parents, from our community, from our teachers, it's just these, these conditions and rules that we take on. And so a lot of my clients, now I have clients from all over the world, but I have a lot of them that are from my area. And um, we deal with this every day with them growing up. I mean, I see these adults that feel that they left their parent, let their parents down because they had these, these rules. And, and this isn't even a Catholic thing. Let's just take that off the table right now. This is just, I meet a lot of people who feel like they could not live up to what their parents needed or felt judged their entire life. And me, I'm raising my hand. That was me too. 
you know, I was a preacher's daughter, remember? So, <laughs> hello, judged since birth, just like most um, Catholics were. So, um, as she and I are getting into this conversation, it wasn't an argument, but I'm going to call it a heated conversation. <laughs> um, I actually had to leave the room. I just had to get up and go. I just like, I was just beyond, I couldn't even believe that a parent would say the things I was hearing. But then here's, you know, me today going, who am I to say how this mother should show up? And, you know, I'm, I wasn't regretting what I did. I feel, I feel like, hey, that's my truth and I'm going to speak it. So if that's happening, I'm going to say, look, do you know how many adults I deal with that are screwed up because their parents or are not screwed up? That wasn't the word I used, but they feel like they've let their parents down or they have to do things a certain way or their parents are going to like not love them as much. Like that's the things I was saying. So my big epiphany today was that that was a trigger for me. It triggered the stuff in me, uh, the stuff growing up that if I didn't do things a certain way that maybe my parents wouldn't love me as much or I disappoint them. And yeah, I realized today, I'm like, geez, that really like, I didn't even realize I could get that like pissed off about something like that, that had nothing to do with me, but then it did. <laughs> It's like I was, and again, part of it, I think, is I just want to, you know, I love to defend children. It's just my thing. I, I just, I'm just like, let your daughter do whatever the fuck she wants to and just love her anyway. Like, can't we all just say that? We just love you unconditionally. So the trigger happened. And I have triggers like everyone else, obviously. This is one of them that I'm telling you about. But things happen. It triggers things in me. It might trigger things that I'm pissed off about. It might trigger fear. It might trigger doubt. Something might happen that makes me say once again, oh my God, I am not good enough. Who do I think? I can't even be doing this shit. What, who do I think I am? So we all go through it, me included. But here's the thing. I know exactly what I need to do as soon as I've come to that epiphany that this triggers happened. Uh, first of all, I sent a message out to our friend who... Um, is the bartender at this establishment. And I said, I, please, I hope I did not ruin your evening. <laughs> I sent a message to this young lady and I said, please apologize to your mother for me. Um, tell her that I am not an asshole. I'm really a nice person, but I guess she perhaps triggered something in me that came up from me being a preacher's daughter. And I am so sorry that, that we got into that conversation. And I am also grateful because I did not know that was still in there and I needed to know that that was there. So it was an apology, but also sending gratitude. Thank you for showing me what I still need to work on. And then I just let it go. I didn't sit here and wallow in it and say, God, how could you go out and, and act like that? No, I said, hey, it, I don't know that I would do it any different tonight if someone said the same thing to their daughter. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and beat myself up for it. And guess what? I'm not Jesus. I love Jesus. I talk to him often. And... But I'm not him. <laughs> um, yeah. Doing the best I can. I'm human too. We're all doing the best we can. But when these triggers happen, we need to realize it. We need to notice it. We need to own up to them. And excuse me while I get on my little furball, Macy. Macy. Um, when she feels like she's being ignored, she goes and tries to chew on my plants. <laughs> okay. So we must own up to them. Even if I felt I was right in everything that I was saying, which I was, <laughs> I'm still going to apologize for the way that I interfered in that mother's, you know, whatever, in their journey. So take it from me. Take my lead. Apologize when you need to. Do the work when you need to. When those triggers come up, find whatever it is, the tool that works for you. You know, my spiritual boot camp is, has so many amazing tools in it that help you, not just with triggers, but that is one of the amazing things that it, it, it helps people transform um, from their old ways into the new, um, either through tapping, through different meditations that I have on there, or different exercises. But find something that works for you. It doesn't have to be my spiritual boot camp. But find something that helps you get out of the, your stories. And then 
let it go. Forgive yourself, whatever you think you've done or, or haven't done, let it go. We must let go of the past. Yesterday, last night, that's the past. I sent my apology. It's over. I'm moving on. I'm not going to feel bad next time if I ever see them again. I'm just going to walk in smiling and be my usual self. I'm not going to go up and go, oh, my God, I'm so sorry about that again from months ago. So notice the triggers. And let's start changing them. Let's start changing things. You know, it's it's really you become brilliant when you when you get to where you can realize that it, something triggered you. Like, what did this? What is this about? Like, that's what I was doing today. What was that about? Like, and then I said, Shit, I took a walk outside along the river behind my house, and I was like, God, it was about me. Like, it's still when I hear of a parent that has certain conditions for a child, it really pisses me off because I lived that my entire life. So, my friend, I will be doing some more work tonight, whether it's tapping or, and, and it's really about forgiveness and letting go, forgiveness and letting go, forgiveness and letting go. I am good enough. I am worthy. Um, you know, whatever it is, I, lo- I, I tap sometimes in the car when I'm driving. Tapping is one of my go-to uh, healing modalities. So, yes, it is Monday, so I want to give you a message and I'm looking at my decks behind me and Mother Mary that is the deck I'm looking at so Mother Mary oh what a beautiful energy she is so loving and nurturing and thinks of all of us as her children she truly does oh and I yeah I really need to clarify something real quick So I did a podcast about the blessings of Archangel Gabriel, I believe is the title. And I talked about Gabriel having a feminine energy and the different ways that Gabriel can can help us and, and bless us on our journey. And I had several people reach out and say, oh, I didn't know that Gabriel was a female. Okay, so I wanted to clarify this. The angels, archangels, us... Every soul is this illuminated being. It's not a, a male or female anything. You know, we've been, we've been uh, men. We've been women our past lives. It's, we're, we're adults. We're the children. We switch roles. So when we're not in this space, in this physical form, we are neither female or male. Like, I want to make sure you get that. So the angels, they may come forth and feel more feminine or masculine energy, whatever is needed. I know people that connect with Gabriel as um, a male energy or masculine energy. And they'll ask me if that's wrong. I'm like, no, it's whatever, it's whatever you need. So take that off of, the, off of your um, list that, that there's male and female um, angels. They come forward and may feel more feminine or more masculine. But again, let's make it clear. We're all illuminated beings that are not, do not have a specific sex. Okay, I hope that clears that up. Just like Mother Mary, she, we're going to call her she because that's how we know her. We know her story as Jesus' mother. And so we'll always imagine Mother Mary as this female um, figure, this mother, beautiful mother energy. And she's an illuminated being like all of us. But that's the gift that she gives us. All right. So we got the Mother Mary cards by Doreen Virtue. It's called Mary, Queen of Angels. And Mary is the Queen of Angels, by the way. So let's see. I'm going to shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And I'm just asking what it is that we need to hear. And whenever you hear this message, this is exactly, exactly what you need to hear. Okay. So I have three cards here. The first card is the devotion card. It's Mother Mary, and she's surrounded by sweet, oh, what are these little children or cherubs? Oh, my gosh, so many little cherubs. Oh, I love them. It reminds me of all the rainbow kids that are guiding me. So it's Mary surrounded by all these little cherubs, these little baby angels. And the message is, as I fully commit to my values, relationships, and God, I am clear about what to do next. Okay, so let's 
oh, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and read out of the little book here that comes because I like to do this so that you know that you can get your own deck of cards, get your own readings, okay? There's a little book inside that will tell you the meaning of it. This card reminds you to stick with what you believe and not to waver from your values. If someone or something tempts you away from your basic core beliefs, pray for the strength to say no. Don't go chasing illusions of more money or love when everything you need and desire is available to you now if you simply recommit to what is right for you. I can get the page turned. There we go. What is important to you? That is the answer you seek. Spend time in prayerful communion with God and pour your heart out to him about your feelings, including any fears or doubts. God and Mother Mary love you unconditionally, and they are here for you right now. Pray for clarity about your true priorities, values, and beliefs, and then base your decisions upon this solid foundation. Commit to your beliefs and devote yourself to God, and everything else will take care of itself. I want to make sure that you hear the message here because I, when I read some of these, I think, gosh, I wonder if some people are going to interpret this another way. I can see some people inter interpreting this as devote yourself to your, you know, talents and abilities and be of service and service equal, you know, equally poor or not charging enough or not asking enough. So that is not what this means. It means to get super clear on what it is you want to do, what you're here to do. Get clear. If you aren't clear, you pray for clarity. And then you allow God, the angels, your guides, all of them to bring you the people that show up in your path that give you clarity, the God winks that you receive during the day that give you clarity, the aha moments, the epiphanies. And right now, during Mercury Retrograde, it's a really good time to just sit back and ask for clarity and get super clear on what your vision is. The next card is Blessings. Today I count my blessings, small and large, and I notice the new gifts that come to me from God. So as you step into your devotion, you really hone in on your devotion, and I am devoted to this no matter what. My heart and soul is in this. It makes my soul sing to do this. So devotion to a job that you hate, that's not, okay, that's not what we're talking about either. This is destiny, you know, this is the destiny train tooting the horn. That's what this whole year's about. Step into your destiny. Do what you love to do. The blessings will come. It reminds me of, I just got to tell you real quick, one of my coaching clients, um, Nikki. Hey, Nikki, going to shout out. We're coming up on um, our six, the end of our six-month coaching um, 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 arrangement. And she contacted me. She said, I don't know why, but I know I'm supposed to work with you. I just know it. And um, she did not know if she had any kind of like intuitive radar showing her the way. She had a, a friend pass away uh, at the, you know, I think in the, within the last year. And she felt her friend was trying to guide her, give her messages, but that's all that she had gotten. And so we started working together, and I told her, I said, you're going to be floored at how quickly you open up to your abilities. Now me, I truly believe everyone can do what I do, just some people either don't want to or they've convinced themselves that they can't. So Nikki and I started, and truly, truly, <laughs> just, I was, I'm always floored at how quickly my clients do this or you know move into their spiritual abilities but I think she was beyond floored as well and so Nikki I know I've asked if I could share her story and she is going to be one of my guests on here I'm going to interview her very soon and she's going to talk to you about her transformation because I really wanted her to tell her story so that you could hear it and just just see how your, your life can shift if you just give it a chance like if you just decide to do something different or new or something you're Maybe you're scared to do, but what can happen? Because I think we were at the four-month mark, and she's ready to close her online business, which she is in the process of doing, and she is moving into her spiritual work and already has people waiting in line. She is now a medium, an intuitive angel, and, I'm, and I don't want to give her those labels. I don't know what she's calling herself, but like I always say, I teach people to see things through God's eyes because it's always love. 
But that's what I'm talking about. Devoted. She decided I'm doing this and I'm closing this door because this does not serve. Her business is booming, but it doesn't serve her soul anymore. So she's moving into her spiritual work. She's devoting her time. The blessings are coming already. Her online business is selling out. She needed to sell the inventory and people are waiting for her. She's being asked to come to um, different facility, yoga place, uh, facilities to work, like to offer readings. And so the doors are opening. So I hope you receive this message today, whenever it is that you listen to this. And that really getting clear and focused on what you want to be doing, your, what do you want to devote your, not just your time, but your life to. And then welcome the blessings. Because when we are tapped into what our soul desires, what makes our soul sing, that's that level of joy, love and joy and bliss that brings in the abundance in all its forms, whether it's money, health, love, opportunities, friendships. I don't know if you can hear a little tumbling in the background. If you can, it's just um, Macy, once again, <laughs> she has a little a toy that if she spins it, the food comes out. So she's over there using it. All right. I am sending massive love to you right now. Big hugs. Big hugs to you. It's time to step into your truth, your destiny, whatever it is. And I don't care what your age is. I have talked to people who are in their 60s and are making shifts, that they're changing everything. We're all going through it. It doesn't matter how old you are. It's a beautiful time to really realize that you're here for massive and amazing stuff every single day. Ah, Just take a big, deep breath. Big deep breath. Take in the love that the universe is sending you right now. You are so loved. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.